So in the last class, we were discussing about a system which is undergoing damped oscillation. So we can have this uh, mass M connected to a string and has a force Fs, which is because of the string acting on it. And you know, if a part of it is dipped in water or we are connecting a veining and dipping it in water, it will experience another force, which is actually called the drag force. And uh, this force will actually result in reducing the oscillation at a faster speed. So you can refer to lecture number five if you have missed, uh, and then you can understand that how exactly we arrive at this particular relation. So if we look into the solution of this, we can see that this is the expression that we have, and this is something which we have derived. Now, here there are certain cons uh, constraints, and we need to just uh, check on that. But before we begin, I hope all of you remember the terms here. And when we are talking about something like beta, this beta is actually a force which is connected with the damping term. So this is something which we can write down as the damping constant. So that means the damping, how strong it is, will depend on what will be the value of beta, right? And uh, if you look into omega naught square, okay, we have also uh, done that, right? And we have actually assumed certain things to make our calculations easy. If we check in the last class, we have taken omega naught square as k by n. Now k is related with the spring and beta or B is related to the damping term. So that means we have two forces acting on the system, and these two forces are involved in this final expression. Now, before we start analyzing the cases, let me give you certain important points, and maybe I can write it down as note. So it may or may not be included in your final answers, but then this is something which you should know. Now imagine you basically have a graph and uh, you have a function which is, uh, you know, it's not basically a straight line, it is decaying something like this, okay? So this is an example of exponential decay. This is exponential decay. And as I said, mathematically, we do need to define these terms if you want to define such terms, which is actually having an exponential decay, you can write it down in the form of maybe e to the power a x. Now you see with the x, this value will keep on increasing. So this cannot be a decay. If it has to be a decay, there has to be a minus sign. So that means as you know, as x keeps on increasing, uh, this entire term, which we may write it as y, will reduce. Right? And it will reduce exponentially. It, there won't be a linear decay at this particular case. Okay? And uh, we did also see in our earlier classes that when we are talking about something like a simple harmonic motion and we are representing a wave something like this, we can represent it in the form of a sine function or a cos function. So maybe I can write it down as a sine of omega t, because you know this starts from the origin. You know, it starts from here, the sine of omega t. On the other hand, if you know you might have considered uh, these kind of waves, right? It is basically starting from the peak, right? So this wave will be represented by y is equal to a cos omega t, and so on, right? So if you can represent a function, which is basically having a sine or a cos function, and you know, sine and cos function are more or less something which are repetitive, right? It will actually repeat its behavior after a certain interval. The wave is like this, and after this, it will again become like this, and so on. So if you have a function, a mathematical form, and if you have a sine function and a cos function, you basically call it as simple harmonic motion, right? And of course, this is nothing but periodic in nature. Obviously, sine and cos are periodic functions. 
with periodic in nature. Now, there might be certain other cases. For example, you might have a sine wave, right? Let's let let me just draw one more figure here, and this is actually important from this uh, particular topic point of view. There might be a sine wave or a cos wave, and uh, maybe you know it's like this for the first cycle. In the second cycle, the amplitude drops. and the third cycle, the amplitude drops further and so on, right? So the amplitude keeps on dropping. So you see that the amplitude is also not dropping linearly. There is an exponential reduction in the amplitude. So in simple words, we can say that this waveform is actually representing a simple harmonic motion. And this reduction in the amplitude is in the exponential form. That means we can say it is having an exponential decay, right? Exponential decay. So what does it mean? It means that we do have a periodic motion, but the amplitude will keep on reducing exponentially until and unless it becomes very close to zero. That is the entire idea of damping. Okay. So I hope you got this basic concept clear. And now what we can do is we can proceed. Okay. So uh, you know, let's start on a very clean slate. Let me just rub this off. This was only for your understanding. And now we are going to continue with our notes. So let's check what are the cases which will be basically possible, right? So let's have a look here. And we see that this is the relation. And there are four possible cases which will be there, right? So let's just discuss the possible scenario. So I hope you get this word uh, because, you know, here, Everything will depend on what is the value that beta and omega naught will assume. Which which one will be greater? Which if it's equal or one is greater than the other? Depending on that, we can actually have certain cases. So the first case that I would like to take up is beta is equal to zero, right? So we know beta again is equal to b by two m, right? That is the damping term. So we can say that there is no damping. So I can straight away say that beta is equal to zero. Now, if there is no damping, common sense dictates and it tells me that the motion will be an oscillatory in nature and it will keep on moving to and fro. Right? It will be simple harmonic in nature. It will be a simple harmonic motion and we will be basically having oscillation. And there will be no damping, right? That's an ideal case, oscillation. So that's simple. Now, the second case, let's look into the second case. In the second case, we have, let's say, this term beta square, which we have, which is damping, is actually less than omega naught square. What is omega naught square? That is the term associated with the force, right? Which is the uh, spring constant, right? The term associated with the force exerted by the spring, which is a spring constant. In this motion, what we are going to see is we are going to have an oscillating motion. Okay, we may be writing writing it down like oscillating motion. So we will have an oscillating motion now. Right. And uh, we typically call it as under damping. So I hope you understand the word, uh, you know, because there will be damping. It's not that there won't be any kind of damping, right? So it will be oscillating, right? It will be oscillating. It will be oscillating means it will have a sine term or a cos term, the mathematical expression, and there will also be damping. So that means it should have an exponential term as well. More on that as we keep on explaining here. So don't worry, we are going to explain this in more detail later. We are going to look into the mathematical form of each of them. For now, we are just looking into the possible scenario. Let's look into the third possible scenario. The third possible scenario, as you can guess, is that beta square is equal to omega naught square. What happens in such case? That means the force exerted by the spring is more or less almost equal to the force that is because of the damping. So beta square is equal to omega naught square. That means this term will become zero. This term will become zero. 
So, you know, anything to the power 0 is 1. So, this will be C1 plus C2 and E to the power minus theta T. So, you can see that there will be basically an exponential term, but there may not be a sine term or a cos term. In fact, there won't be any sine term or cos term. So, there is only a exponential term. That means, in such cases, we are not going to have any kind of oscillation. Although we are going to analyze it mathematically in the later classes, but right now, just understand this, there will be no oscillation. And this is something, a condition, where we call it as critical damping. Uh, there is a specific meaning to this, why we use the word critical, but we are going to come to that later. So this is about critical damping. Let's look into the fourth case. The fourth case, it's quite obvious, we have beta square is greater than omega naught square. That's the fourth case. So here also, if we you know, solve it and look into it mathematically, here also we are going to see that there will be no oscillation. That means the final mathematical term is not going to have any kind of uh, cost term or sign term. So there will be no oscillation. If there is no oscillation, what we can say is, uh, this is a case where we call it as overdamping. Overdamping. And, you know, critical damping lies between underdamping and overdamping. So that's basically the borderline. And that's why we call it as overdamping. Okay. Now, before we proceed, uh, I would like to just discuss certain important points here. Uh, we are going to take each of these cases one after the other, but before that, let me tell you, we have seen that beta is equal to B divided by 2M and omega naught square is equal to K by M. So what you can do now is, since we are taking up the cases and comparing beta square and omega naught square, we can equate them. So let's write down what is beta square. So beta square is equal to b square divided by 4m square. So uh, in case we are taking up this case where we can say that beta square is equal to omega naught square, and that is this particular case. Uh, we can write it down in a different way. Beta square is nothing but b square divided by 4m square is equal to omega naught square. Omega naught square is nothing but k by m, right? And what we can do here is we can actually simplify it a bit and we can you know, cancel this and uh, this m here. And uh, we can do the cross multiplication and we can see that b square is equal to 4km. So what was beta? So I'm relying on damping. What was omega naught square? The term depending on the spring force. Here also, B square is the term directly connected with damping and K is the term connected with the spring force. So another way to write down this is maybe we can say for this particular case, we can say that, you know, B square is equal to 4 km. It will depend on what book you're following, but if you're following this lecture, Preferably, we're going to use this condition, but this is also the same condition because we know what is beta and what is omega naught, right? So in a similar way, we can say this particular condition would be nothing but B square is greater than 4 times Km. And in this particular case, we can say B square is less than 4 times Km. And when we're talking about beta square, beta is equal to 0. That means, you know, this term is 0. That means B is equal to 0. So this particular condition, we can say that B is equal to 0. So these are the four possible scenarios that we are going to discuss in the next 